David McGurn, welcome back to Race TV. It's great to have your company. We've shared a lot of discussions in the past, but we're here tonight to speak about something um, probably far more important in terms of marking your, your own history with Wraith Rovers. It's your testimony on Sunday. What can you tell us about it? It's great to, great to see you again. Uh, uh, excited about uh, Sunday. Uh, it was a long time, so I organised, so I we confirmed it. Uh, so a few years down the line, uh, hoping to, uh, to get up and running Sunday and looking forward to it. Yeah. Is it true that one of the delays was that the initial date clashed with an old firm game and um, you had other football and allegiances to deal with? <laughs> yeah, it's true, actually, that's very true. I uh, didn't know anything know about that, but yeah, it's, it, it's true. A few years ago, it was something else popped up, so it was, but it, it was one of those things, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about uh, some of the names of uh, the guys that are coming along to play. There's quite a cast of um, Wraith Rovers uh, royalty from uh, recent years going to turn up and pay their respects. Yeah, there's a few uh, boys turning up, uh, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, guys like Alan Walker uh, turning up, uh, Simi. Uh, Mark Campbell, uh, Brian Graham, which is st still playing with uh, uh, Fraser Mullen, I'm still playing with. We know that Brian Graham's still playing. We've uh, uh, seen him recently. I heard that. I heard that. Uh, uh, Dougie Hill, obviously, a big Gary O'Connor. So guys I've, I've played with uh, in the past. So it'll be good to see them again. Yeah. Good bunch of characters, and they've all turned up. You're joined by some of the, the kind of legends for the past: Jock McStay, Peter Heatherson, Colin Cameron, Jason Dare, and Big Marv amongst others. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, they're going to uh, turn up uh, and play. Uh, I've met a few of them at the, the couple of Hall of Fame nights we've had. Uh, the guys are legends. They've done wonders for the club and won uh, so many things. Uh, it's been uh, the cup night that won the 1995. Uh, Big Marvin Andrews played, played with him. Uh, great centre half. Uh, legend of a guy. So great to keep giving up our time uh, for myself. I'm, it's very much appreciated and honoured that they're going to do this, yeah. Are you excited about the day? Oh, yeah, very nervous, was uh, very nervous, but I'm excited. Uh, kids are looking forward to it, uh, so, yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to embarrass you a wee bit by telling you some of your stats here. Over 240 performances for Wraith Rovers, third highest appearances for any goalkeeper across our 135-year history. Only Bobby Reid and Murray McDermott ahead of yourself. What do Wraith Rovers mean to you? It's... It's hard to put in words. It feels like, as I said before, I uh, feel at home, I feel comfortable playing there. Uh, the different managers, different players come and go and being there for for a year. Uh, the fans, they uh, play well, applaud you, you make a mistake, they'll, they'll let, let you know about it, but they were brought to myself. Uh, I love put, playing on a jersey, I love going playing with them, uh, winning the leagues, etc., and trying to win cups. It, it, was, it was my life, to be honest with you, yeah. It was a successful time that you had with ourselves, uh, looking at uh, 17 shutouts in the season that we, we won the second division, Scottish Cup semi-final. What was it about that kind of squ those squads of players that, that made them so successful? What was the characteristics that they had? It was, it was very mixed. You had guys like Mark Campbell, Todd Lumsden, Marvin Andrews, uh, on the park, strong characters, uh, in the dressing room, all, all very different. Uh, all completely uh, crazy at times. Uh, grumpy, moany, uh, semi, <laughs> uh, especially. But they're all sort of all worked hard, all had a work ethic, and that came from the manager, John McGlynn. Uh, Tuesday nights at training, uh, I don't get to be half past nine, we're sitting in a room watching games. You get a laser pen to say, right, what'd you do there? Pausing it and saying, right, what were you thinking? <laughs> and so it was like, that was like quarter past ten at night, and boys are working the next day. But we get the benefits from it, we won the league and we won it at Hamden, which was great. But uh, it was we guy, we were a real team. I remember Matt Ferry was a sub, great player Matt Ferry, he was a sub, come on. First touch of the ball, Stenhouse moves, go be a header. Uh, it was fantastic and we're all, we're all together with it. It was, we were, we were a real team, it was, it was great. You, you were out injured for the Ramsons Cup final, but one of the things I was keen to mention in the interview is uh, I, I know that you'd played with Lee, Lee Robinson at Morton, but I'm not sure that everybody knows that you did end up with a Cup winner's medal. Could tell us that story. Yeah, it was very strange. Uh, Lee was outstanding in that game. Unfortunately, uh, striking back fit, but with injury, we were still months away from being fit, but I was training. Uh, Lee played 
out with one lead. We had to score a great goal, won, won it. Uh, Lee Robertson uh, got his medal, and he, to me, he was man of the match. He was superb. He saves, and then we're up on the sort of podium, and he gave he gave me his medal. He said, "That's for you." He says, "You deserve it." Well, yes, well, no, 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 this is not brilliant. And he, he gave it to me. Uh, but I've known Lee for years. Uh, good friend, uh, brilliant to work with. Uh, uh, very uh, nice lad. Can I say any more? But uh, so I said at reception, uh, like a Cody, then he got he got he got medal as well. He which is brilliant. So I couldn't thank him enough, but I wasn't expecting it, and I tried giving it back, and he wasn't having it. So, but that was a very kind gesture, of stuff. Well, I'm going to try and kind of draw your attention to just uh, maybe three games I've picked because I'm really interested, and the fans will be to see what was your recollections of being in and around the, the dressing room and, and actually taking part in the 90 minutes. The first one I wanted to ask you about was um, the Scottish Cup one at Ibrox. What, what do you remember? That was good. That was a good victory. Uh, Rangers still a strong team. Uh, obviously, we, we weren't favourites. Uh, we're in a Saturday. We've done a lot of shape. We can't worry about how we're going to play, how we're going to go about it. Uh, very late session then Sunday, uh, everything sort of clicked to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think it was a, a bad performance to be honest with you with the boys. Uh, uh, Ryan Connery, great, great free kick, fantastic free kick and then Nadi was, uh, he was played really well that day, held the ball up, worked hard, uh, scored a goal for half a yard out, but a uh, uh, brilliant play with I guess, Jason Thompson. We, had, we worked extremely hard and family and friends and that were on both sides, we were on the Rangers side, they were on the they were in sort of the Rovers end as well, so, but it was a we weren't favourites. It was live in BBC, and we I think we did have to win that day. To be honest with you, yeah. Dream stuff. You mentioned um, Christian Nadi uh, with a tap in the second game. I'm going to ask you about had the most nerve wracking tap in ever, and it was Gregory Taddy up at Aberdeen. <laughs> um, an injury ravaged team. The the you know incredibly serious crash uh, involved Mark Campbell through the week. I don't think many people gave us a chance going into that game. No, no one did. Uh, we should have beat them. I think we should have beat them with the home tie and they scored a late goal. Uh, but we're not there. And we had a, we had a makeshift set, I think, semi play centre half. We had the news about Mark Campbell. I think Johnny also got injured as well at the start. We had, it, was, it wasn't sort of the. If you're going, you're starting to love in fair positions, it wasn't what you were going for. But it was that team again. We worked extremely hard uh, on the ball, off the ball. We demanded a lot from each other. He didn't get away much. Uh, people told you to make sure that if you weren't doing your job, they would tell you to do your job. But we had we all respect for each other. And <laughs> Taddy scored a lot of good goals, uh, very pacey, but he missed a few fair yard out. <laughs> but, he, but it was a great finish. It was a relief to be honest with you. And then there was headers at the last minute, balls getting cleared as well. No one gave it a chance. Uh, it was a, a good victory. And also that led us into sort of the Dundee game. The semi final as well, uh, so the quarter final. It was quite a run going to get to Hamden, and uh, um, you know, we acquitted ourselves well against a, a very skillful Dundee United team at Hamden. Yeah, when you look back at sort of their start 11, you see sort of uh, what, what the players have done and where they are now. Uh, I think we've done very well, to be honest, yeah. The, the, the third game I'm going to ask you about is the 2009 derby, which um, we had played through the week. We hadn't had a great performance. Damien came in and joined the, the team. Grant Murray set the heather on fire with a, a smasher yeah. for 25 yards. And then um, and then you, you pull off a save, which I think you've been credited as saying it's it's your favourite save for Wraith Rovers. And effectively, you, you got an assist on a goal as well because it went for your hands to the back of the Dunfermline net. What can you recall? I'm taking that assist. Uh, it, was, it was a tough game, but I think it all fed, feeds back to... Uh, in the midweek game we sort of let ourselves down a wee bit to be honest we weren't great uh, we deserved to get beat it was a cup game and then obviously the game the Saturday league game uh, don't know what's different uh, Grant Moyes scored a great goal he made a few saves but uh, we won that one up and the cross came in steady action diving to the left and the ball got played up and Damien continues that run it's a great finish uh, it was a it was a great victory. It was a, I think it was more a full house. The stand, uh, there was a lot, a lot of Ray Flowers fans and the noise, and especially after it, the celebration and stuff. Do you guys go, well, you can actually do something this year, you can actually go and make an impact. Over 2,000 Rovers fans there that day. I think maybe the Dunfermline match reporter had his head in his hands because I read the report today and it says a header at the back post from Castlenovo. That's not what I remember. Oh, wasn't it? No, wasn't it? Uh, it was a save, and then Bobby put up the line. I think it was that. 
Dan Smith, Dan Smith up the line, uh, crossed it in, big Dan, uh, big sort of, what do you call him? Damien. Damien uh, they put it in me, yeah, for first touch, so that was good. Yeah. I mentioned about, um, you've said that's that's your favourite save, but uh, the save that's got kind of mythical status round about Starts Park is your triple save against Air United. Um, only just last season, one of their goalkeepers um, caught me after the game and says, David, can you get me a tape of this save? I keep hearing about this save, at least three saves. It can't be as good as, as I hear. I got him it and he said it was as good. What, what do you recall from uh, from from being in the moment and, and have you gone back and had a wee look at it? I've looked at it, I have looked at it, yeah, I can't can't remember much about it to be honest. It's it's like it's like any game. Uh, you remember, just remember a shot came round, you hope hopefully you make a save, you make a save then you're up and you're going across to make the next one. Uh, it's the way you train. Uh the goalkeeper you, you make one save, two, you make sort of two or three saves in case you do drop it or you parry it out. Uh, just by luck, uh, in the right place at the right time, uh, it didn't go in, and then a few minutes later, about the park, uh, Simi scores with a header. Uh, we draw that game. I think it was a sort of important part. The saves, and then sort of getting that point. The saves wouldn't have been much if I hadn't got anything from the game. I think they scored the other one with a free kick. Uh, so I think it was important that we got that a point out of that, and we got I think the last minute header with a cross. You, um, you're kind of famous for your part-time relationship with Ruth Rovers, working at, uh, at the college. Um, primarily, you worked under Grant Murray and John McGlynn, um, that were supporting cast. You know, I can't not mention Wayne Henderson, Paul Smith, Laurie Ellis. What was it like working with, with the two managers? Were they very different? What, what did each? Uh, how did they get the best out of you? I don't think all my life were very different. Uh, John McGlynn, first of all, loves, loves football. Oh, he absolutely loves it. Uh, but he he understood we had five or six part time players: uh, Robert Sloan, Mark Campbell, Mark Ferry, uh, Dougie Hill. With a lot of sort of part time players, Todd Lumsden, and we used to sort of travel up Tuesday, Thursday nights, train after full time guys to train in the afternoon and stuff. But they were honest and they worked extremely hard. Uh, they pushed you. Uh, didn't let like, didn't let like you away much to be honest. And we were, I was only part time player at one point, and we were straight myself and Waz had to go and train up in King Ross. It was a Tuesday night, it was pouring the rain on the Astro in this high school and just at the corner we see uh, John McGlynn standing there with his Rose jacket on. He's like, can I be, can I be a gaffer? Ah, it, was a, it was a gaffer, just, I mean, I've just changed, I'm working hard. Uh, he trusted but he wanted to come up and see it. Uh, love football and you, you had to sort of give everything because he gave you everything. Uh, even get to the semi-final. Uh, uh, the, Scottish Cup in our game, we give you as much information as possible in any game you played. Uh, we give you much information, left foot, right foot, strength, weaknesses uh, of your opponent to make sure that you are able to sort of go and beat them. Uh, Grant Murray uh, won the Ramsey Cup, brilliant achievement. Uh, very hard for Grant, I think, as a player. He was a player in the changing room and then from overnight and for a player to sort of be a manager. But I thought he'd done it extremely well and it's, and it's proven that he's a good coach and he's and what he's doing now uh, at Hibs. So he, and he'll continue to sort of be successful, very good player, very very good professional. And you, you looked up to him in terms of the way he trained, his attitude uh, on the park was brilliant. So I think he'll continue to be a successful coach in, in the future, yeah. It was uh, Ray McKinnon favoured um, the full-time goalkeeper at the time, Kevin Cuthbert. So after signing a contract extension, I think four months later, you're you're away um, on loan to Stranraer. H- how did that feel to to be making that move sideways? Uh, was wasn't great, but uh, that is football. Every manager who comes in, whether you're full time, part time, they're going to have a preference of who their who their goalkeeper, number one goalkeeper is. Obviously, me being part time, it didn't help that situation, uh, and. Going to Shrunner at the time uh, was, was an option, so gutted to leave Ray Flores, to be honest with you. I wanted to try and stay there as long as possible, see out my contract, not go on loan. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the way football, football was and is. I think in a move that only Wraith Rovers could pull off a month after um, you go on loan, we induct you into the Hall of Fame. That's a very Wraith Rovers thing to do. Um, what do you remember of that night? How, how important was that to, to you and your family? It was a great night, uh, very honoured. It's something that you don't think 
would ever happen to yourself in terms of Hall of Fames. Hall of Fames are for sort of the legends, and it's not, it's no, it's not like I myself. Uh, and it was a fantastic night. I remember everything about it. Uh, the Premier House, then driving up uh, there and meeting sort of all the sort of the professionals, the elites. Uh, it was fantastic, and the, meeting the Ray was fans and that as well, being up on the stage, I was very honoured, and that's all I can really say about it, and I'm delighted, yeah. It, because you n- never got to say cheerio to Ray Rovers fans, do you feel there's a bit of unfinished business to be taken care of on, uh, on Sunday in terms of saying uh, a proper goodbye? Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah that's something that, you know, if it's your last game, you know, it's your last game, and then you, c- you can do that. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have that. I didn't have that chance. I've been to Starts Park once. Uh, I, think I, was, I was injured. I think I could not be if I was injured. Uh, and then we played them this season. Uh, it's a bit strange because we're at East Fife's ground. Uh, but it's been. But I'm looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, it'd be good to see the fans. Uh, good reception. Uh, a lot of respect for them. Uh, and hopefully, keep continue going. But the guys who I played with. Uh, and even like, Wayne Henderson, Gary O'Connor, great guys to go and train with, and big Ross Laidlaw as well, to be honest. He's doing brilliant. Uh, and just to see boys like that continuing to, to go and play. We'll look forward to catching up uh, maybe post match, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Davey.